While scrolling through social media, you have probably encountered online articles titled Top 10 Cities to Live In. These rankings usually take into consideration a city's culture, livability, presence of economic opportunities, and quality of life. You might be thinking, what does it mean for a city to have a high quality of life? This could mean so many things like the air quality, opportunities for work, good relationship between people and the environment, security, and a lot more. But then again, we have to realize that not all cities are made equal. Problems in creating the ideal city are prevalent in our society. Corruption, wars, political disputes, and unstable governments prevent citizens like us from forming our ideal communities. The question is, how do we make sure that our public spaces are truly for the benefit of the people? What can we do to improve our cities and our experience of the built environment? By putting civil participation as a priority in today's urban planning scene, we want to ensure that the cities of tomorrow are people-centric. Not profit-centric, not consumption-centric, people-centric. By making people the main voice of urban planning, we can communicate our needs and leverage the power of communities to shape the cities of tomorrow. In Table 5's topic on participatory urban planning, let's learn how to use our ideas to shape our environment. Using this practice, we can involve our communities in the grassroots strategic process of how we interact with the space around us. We look forward to hearing your ideas this summer in ISC 67. So, are you ready to put your ideas into action?